Welcome back to the bench. We've got something a little bit different for you. There's been plenty of videos I've seen online on how to convert your old ETX power supply into a bench power supply, which is a good use for an old ATX power supply. This is mine. Um, it still works fine. Um, it's a bit noisy. Um, several years old, so I thought it was about time to replace it. And um, yeah, we can see here that uh, there's various uh, 3.35, 12.1, one, not sure why, 12.2, <laughs> yeah, uh, minus 12 and, five, and a secondary 5 volts on here. Um, like the first 5 volts rated at 20 amps and the 12 volts at 30, uh, 20 amps and the 5 amps, 30 amps. Another 20 amp output, another 3 amp, so it's pretty beefy. Um, usually on these um, videos you see them um, take this power supply apart, drill holes in, fit a switch, put some binding posts so you get a like a 12 volt output. Um, but um, I was planning on doing that and I was looking for like a suitable switch and some binding posts on eBay just to, um, to be able to do that. Um, uh, and then I found an interesting little item. I found this. It takes the um, cable from your power supply and it converts it onto binding posts. There was a little switch on here which I've already taken off um, and you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so then, yeah, so we've got a minus 12, plus 12, 5, and 3.3, .3, and they all have fuses. Now, each, they all came with 5 amp fuses for the standard, so I've replaced some of those with like lower, like 800 milliamp ones on the 5 volts and the minus 12 because I want to, uh, yeah, obviously have some protection there and not blow the R so stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, I've already cut off all the extra cables off of here um, and then just tied them up on the inside. Um, and yeah, so this just plugs straight into, yeah, nice and easy, clean. And the great thing is that you can put your power supply out of the way. So you haven't got this ugly, ugly black box or silver, if it's silver one, sitting on your desk. Um, and I also left just one of these um, all its connectors on just in case I wanted to use it for something else, a different uh, connection on there for... Uh, another reason and what I've also done is I've gone and made a front panel because I have a little box here which I uh, have my monitor mounted on so I can um, put this on the front of there and then I've got all my connections it goes this way up so yeah I've got a voltmeter and our meter I've got a 10 turn pot to adjust the voltage um, because I've got a little book converter on the back sandwich in there it's going to drop it down and this is all fed by the minus 12 and the plus 12 and um, so giving me a 24 volt um, range on this or near enough and um, the switch turn it on and off which is why I've already placed the switch on there and then I've just got three sets of banana uh, sockets on here so I've got 12 volts minus 12 volts and 5 volts so yeah, I can just hook my projects up to there and then obviously yeah, just the indicator LED and I'll just find myself a power cable, plug it in and I'll show you it working. Before I power it up, I need to connect on my front panel. Okay, so it's already fitted terminals on here so I can screw on. So let's just undo these binding posts. I'm not using the 3.3 .3 volts because yeah, any projects I have, they'll have their own little regulator on board, which is 3.3. .3. So the orange is my minus 12. Okay, obviously black is grown. The grains are all common together, even though I'm using two grains on here, it doesn't really matter. It's just for extra current handling. Although one wire should be able to handle plenty of current. Yellow is my 5 volt. And red is the 
12 volt. Or the plus 12 volt, I should say. It's got a little connector. It actually says reset switch on there, uh, which is also off an old computer. So that's why that's on. Why I put the JTS connector on there. Okay, and the great thing is that once this is all done, this can be screwed on somewhere underneath my desk, completely out of the way. So you haven't got this great big box taking up lots of room. Okay, so I'll plug this in and we're up and running. And now I can just simply switch that on. Okay. And I can then use this 10 turn pot. I think it goes down to about 1.5 volts. 1.1, that's lower than I thought it was. And then I can just slowly increase this. And keep going. And it'll top out at 22.5. So not quite this full 24 volts, but it's more than good enough. And yeah, and I can just switch the whole thing off from here without the uh, need to uh, reach under and mess around with any other switches. So we'll get the voltmeter out. We'll see how accurate that. Correction, I said that was a five volt. It had a five volts on here. No, but it isn't. It's 12 volts minus 12 volts and the variable power supply. I don't really need a five volt supply for anything here. So that's saying 22.5. And that's pretty close. The voltmeter says it's 22.63. This is going to be my minus 12 volts. Although it's more, more like minus 11. Which is probably why that one's a little bit low. This is a plus 12. Yeah. So there is a slight variation on that. So yeah, I mean the total between the two is 23.19. So there'll be a little bit of overhead on the um puck converter. I could use a boost converter as well and get a higher voltage, but I really don't see the need on having more than 22 volts. The reason I've got the plus 12 and minus 12 is if I want to do a kind of any you know off amp projects then I've got the minus voltage there ready to go. So let's just uh, see if we can stick a load on here. Just make sure that ammeter is working correctly. I don't have any leads made up at the moment with uh, clips on so let's just turn this voltage down a little bit this is a 12 volt lamp so it should provide a decent load across there interesting my ammeter is not working okay so probably these wires are the wrong way around So what we can do is click the budget on here and just swap them over. Because they're already soldered in. Although that does say in, so it is going in and this is going to the output. So hmm, unless that's oh it says in and the positive. So yeah, I think it's just uh, not quite accurate the way it's been labelled. Hearing a little clicking sound that's actually coming from the power supply. It's one of the reasons I replaced it because yeah, it's getting a bit noisy, especially when you turn it off and then you just get that horrible clicking sound when there's no load on it. Under a load, it's pretty cool. Okay, so let's try this again. So that's my black wire. Connect the lamp. Ah, that's it. Yeah. So that's drawing about eight, 800 milliamps, 11 volts. So if we wind that up, that will probably actually drop. Oh, would it go up? No, it's going up. And of course, we can wind that really all the way down. 
So the bulb's almost out. It's barely glowing. Still pretty hot though. Obviously. This is 12 volts with these radio for. We can go higher, but yeah, we don't want to blow anything up. So that's the like a neat little lab power supply project. Obviously made a lot easier by the fact that it's got this little board which you can just plug in. So it saves you, I mean, if you're not um, really confident with modding the insides of one of these, um, you don't even have to cut off the extra cables, you can just tie them up and put them somewhere. Um, I just cut it off, you know, just for neatness. I just didn't want all the cables hanging down. And yeah, you can just simply just plug it in and repurpose your old ATX power supply as a lip bench power supply. Now you could simply just screw this onto the face or something and just have the, the wire coming in and you've got this and you can just use the binding posts. But um, I thought I'd just make it look a little bit prettier with this. You know, so I've now got a favorable power supply. So if you like this uh, video, then, you know, use the subscribe button um, and also um, ring the bell um, so you get notified when a new video is released. Thank you for watching.